again, first of all, huge congratulations on this role in joining the Cobra Kai family. Beginning our conversation, um, I have to take you back to those initial days of this project. Like, talk to me more about what you remember about those early onset experiences, meeting everyone for the first time, as well as, you know, how you initially got to play Axel, including your audition process. Yeah, um, so the uh, the audition process, I'll start there, just because I guess that's really the first thing. Um, I remember getting this audition from, from my manager. He was telling me about it. You know, he said it was a, <clears throat> described as a the character breakdown it was like a karate machine, and he was speaking in a, foreign accent so already I was like whoa 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 like this is gonna this feels like an uphill battle this feels like a real challenge just because it was so you know different from anything I felt like I was capable of doing and I guess to my surprise I ended up when, when I put it on tape I felt really good about it and pretty natural and then I went to a callback and and met Josh John and Hayden the show creators and the um the casting directors and we just had a really great you know read and conversation and it just felt like I remember leaving Sony and, and walking back to my car and being like, man, there's something, I think there's something here. I feel, I feel good about this. I don't know what it is. It's, it's just funny how it went from this thing that felt really intimidating to me that I probably wouldn't be able to pull off to just like, oh man, this is actually starting to feel like a character that I really understand and um, I'm feeling good about. So that was kind of the, you know, how, how I got the role. And then getting to set, I, yeah, the, the first... I think the, the first thing I did when I got there was like a hair test because they had to, my hair isn't the way it is now. I had to kind of like chop it off and put some highlights in it, which I was, which was crazy. And I remember um, meeting some of the, the castmates in the um, hair trailer and they're all just really sweet and welcoming. And uh, I could tell really from that moment, just how, you know, I was like, oh, these are just good people and they're, it's a big family here and they, they want the newcomers to feel welcome. And um, that's what makes a good show and an ensemble I think uh and then from there we kind of did like a the following day we did a stunt rehearsal and that was when I really got to meet the, the entire cast and everyone else and we went out that night for um for food and, and drinks and yeah it was just like a such I was like this is this is incredible you know it's not like people are off in their own little pockets it's like no we all come together and um it's a big unit here so that was really a great introduction to being on the show yeah, and what were your own um, first impressions of your character when you were initially offered the script? Do you think um, those impressions stayed the same throughout the shooting of Cobra Kai, or did you come out of the project with sort of like an altered perception of the I, I think that it, it definitely shifted as I was filming, and I think the, uh, you know, it, it probably even shifted a bit with, you know, because you, you have what's on the page, and then you start doing it, and you kind of find things as you go and sometimes like the idea of what I mean I had a conversation with John Hurwitz before filming just about the character and the character arc and we we're very much on the on the same page and he was great to have that call with me beforehand to kind of set me in the right um, headspace but things definitely change as you're as you're going I think they always do because you find things and, and sometimes you'll you'll be doing something and and you'll like I, I know with uh, with um, Axel, it was sort of like, you, you wouldn't imagine a character like that to have any kind of humor, like vulnerability to him. But then there's that moment like on, on the beach with uh, Sam, where I think it has like a lot of both. And I was that that was on the page when I first saw the character description. I was like, no, there's no way this guy's going to have that. But sure enough, it's like a very big part of him. That sort of like vulnerable, like kind of awkward guy in a way that sort of lends to a little bit of comedy, I think, even in that line of like, saying she's pretty by accident and then like kind of catching himself and so there were moments like that where i was like oh there's there's a lot more to this guy uh than what's initially just on on the page there so um i think i i leaned into that and that surprised me uh as we continued filming just like finding those those moments yeah like you said you know i, I know axel has you know a lot of fascinating sides to him from his calm composure of matt to astonishingly like his ruthless offensive fighting style on uh, yeah. against his home. so um what according to you is that element that you consider um makes axel distinct from the other characters within the world of cobra kai well okay i'll say what makes him uh 
Yeah, I think what made him stand out to me and probably what makes him stand out in the show is he he reads as like such an it's it's he's very much like he's not a what you see is what you get kind of good because like when you're introduced to him he is this um you know this force and this kind of like imposing guy and and seemingly just like a like a bad guy like they kind of when when the iron dragons are introduced especially with with reina's line with zara's line of like welcome to barcelona i won't say it i won't curse on but you know what i mean like it's uh you kind of like oh god these these are these are bad guys what's what's going on here and then you just end up seeing a completely opposite side of him and like what he's been dealing with with his sensei and and just how he interacts with um with sam on the beach like there's just this uh kind of like multifaceted person and character and it's just i think it's really interesting because i basically am you know I, I think he just has like such a a wide range of um what's what's the right word for it? i don't just just like who he is as a character is a very uh that you know it spans a lot of different um you know emotions and feelings and uh i just think it's it's interesting as an actor and i think it's interesting from a story standpoint um i think it's just you know because you kind of at first maybe you don't like him that much then you see a softer side to him and you see what he's been dealing with and and there's a bit of a sensitivity to that or like empathy and so yeah it's it's interesting i think people are gonna Hopefully that, hopefully that mixed together rounds out to him being a somewhat likable character. But uh, I guess you know we'll let people decide that on their own. But um, but yeah, I really enjoyed playing him. Yeah, you're right. He definitely has a lot of layers to him that you know as the scenes progresses, you, you right. see. Right. But yeah. So um, how did you uh, prepare yourself to play Axel before going in front of the cameras? Like, did you have any specific acting ritual that you love to immerse yourself into before, you know, in order to get into the mindset of your character? Um, f for me, I think the the biggest obstacle initially was, uh, you know, the the physicality and the and the martial arts stuff because. I knew I had to be, it was, it was like really important to come off as this really imposing guy. And if the fighting didn't match and the energy didn't ma match that, then he just doesn't, he doesn't fit into the story the way he's supposed to fit into the story. And it's not, it's not believable. And it really needs to be believable because these other dojos and, and characters need to be intimidated by him and it just doesn't work otherwise. So that was my my biggest focus was getting in in the right headspace for the the fighting stuff and getting prepared for that. So I kind of did everything that I could on my own to prep physically for the role. And then I didn't have a ton of time though. And then upon like getting to Atlanta and, and starting to film, I even worked a couple times with my stunt double just outside of filming hours. Just kind of he was just a nice guy, and we would train, and he would show me some basics and stuff just so I could sharpen. You know, and, and it kind of just became a fun thing that I that I enjoyed. But it really was about like making sure that part of the character was that to me that was like a really important part. Um, and I'm I'm really pleased with how that turned out. And in terms of like the actual acting, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, you, you kind of for, for me, I guess it's different for every role. But you find like pieces of yourself that are somewhat similar to a character and you lean into it as much as possible. So for me, like the, the awkwardness and the vulnerability, like that stuff almost felt very natural. I was just like, Oh, I, I feel like this guy sometimes I feel like that kind of, you know, gawky, like awkward. So I, I was like, this is great. That felt very natural. But then those moments of being more stoic and uh, like a big force were a bit more challenging for me. So I have to find ways or parts of myself and kind of accentuate that. But, um, but yeah, that was mostly my, my approach. Yeah, and this project is um, very distinct from the other projects that you have, you know, done before yeah. prior to this. So can you um, reveal some insights into your training for this role and the significance that you think that fight choreography and training uh, yeah. personally for you in terms of portraying this character? Yeah, they, that was, it was a lot of work. Um, beforehand, it was... Uh, on, on my own, I was the stuff that I had control of basically was like, I can go to the gym a lot and I can, I took like a kickboxing class and I was watching karate videos and I took a couple other things just to sort of like get a basic understanding of, you know, any sort of fighting. I was just like, I just need to know enough about this. And I, I played sports and stuff, so I felt like I would be able to pick it up somewhat, but it doesn't always translate. Um, and then when I got there, I really like, huge shout out to the stunt 
coordinators and the stunt doubles. I mean, they were one, just some of the nicest people I've ever worked with. And two, so good at, I, I don't know how they got us prepared as quickly as they did, but they had to do so much at work on their end, coming up with these fights kind of last minute and then teaching them to us and also learning them themselves. It was just like, man, it, it was, it was so much work, but it was when, when you had a, a fight sequence coming up, like when I had that fight with, um, with, uh, with Robbie, there's so much prep for that, you know, like, it, but sometimes you only get like a day or half a day or like a night after two. And then at, like, I would, I would learn the choreo and then I'd have a video of it. And sometimes I would go back to my hotel room and I would just practice it with the air. Cause that's sort of like all you can do, you know, like you, you, you have a, you know, you work it for an hour, a couple hours, whatever. And then you go home and you still need to be completely memorized for the following day. So it's almost like not only are you memorizing lines, you're memorizing this totally separate thing. So it was a huge challenge, but I'm so proud of what we did and I would love to do it again. I can't wait for the next opportunity to, to do something like that. Like I really enjoyed it. It was, it was like the best kind of challenge. Yeah, 100%. You, you did so good. Like when I was watching it, I didn't even know that you had no training experience prior to it, any martial arts. Won't so. tell anybody. No. <laughs> oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, so, uh, you know, one of the things that, you know, struck by me while watching the performance and I noticed about Axel was how he has, you know, such a cool demeanor and composure throughout these episodes. But at the same time, you know, he, he knows himself that he has a lot of power and strength. And I think Dimitri, it was in one of the episodes, he referred to your character as something along the lines of, oh, he's like a mix between Winter Soldier and the flying monster. Yeah. So um, now that you've played, now you've been in his shoes, um, how would you yourself personally define Axel, his training style, his mentality, as well as who you know he generally is? Do you think he's, he's, he's a mix between the Winter Soldier and the Frankenstein monster? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a little bit, I think at that point, you know, I, I do think that, I mean, that's a hilarious line. Um, kind of going back to what I was saying earlier, I mean, I think on the surface, I think he's, that's probably exactly what he is like especially when you're watching him fighting but then um yeah i mean like we talked about a bit before just uh having that other side to him just kind of to me <clears throat> changes sorry excuse me <clears throat> just getting so emotional no uh how how i would define him you know uh but yeah he's he's like this really you know strong force of a of a fighter and and competitor and he's just been conditioned to, to care about winning more more than anything and I think he almost maybe doesn't even know why he cares about it so much it's just sort of what he's been born into and and raised with and then outside of it it's like there's this whole person that's just trying to figure out how to how to be a guy how to like how do you interact with the girl you have a crush on how do you you know like what is there outside of fighting and and sort of having that journey of like getting to understand himself and find himself a little more throughout the show is yeah it's, it's great it's um i don't know if that answers your question sorry i'm trying to think of like a a cool way to describe him but i don't think i'm gonna beat what dimitri says <laughs> no it was an amazing answer don't worry about it but yes about that so let's talk about you know axel and sam's relationship in this part like it's a very complicated art that we witnessed mm -hmm. so what was your experience meeting your co-star cool marie manso for the first time as well as you know what can you tell us um in terms of what we can expect from axel and sam in the next part um okay so i i wish i could I probably shouldn't say anything about that could potentially be a spoiler just because I don't want to I don't want to get in trouble here. Um, so I, I'm unfortunately I won't be able to say that. But uh, meeting Mary and working with Mary was phenomenal. She is such a sweetheart and she's so good. And in that scene, you know, in, in the few scenes I had with her, like it really I felt like I didn't even have to act. You know, she really just brought it and put us in that situation like you know just just brought such good energy and she was so sweet and just the way she's kind of like empathizing with me in that scene I could feel it just from her as a person and as an actor so she made it like she was a joy to work with she just made it so easy and I mean it doesn't hurt to be in Barcelona on a, on a beach either even though it was cold but it doesn't, <laughs> doesn't hurt you know it's pretty fun uh, and, and we loved um, your 
your your relationship very complicated, but still it was very adorable to watch. So, um, oh, you, um, is there like any memorable scenes that you know you're very excited for people to watch and you know get their reactions on? Um, yes, I I think I'm I'm very excited for. Uh, I think there's going to be just a lot of impressive fighting in this in this season. I mean the the. The brawl in particular, I'm I'm really excited for people to react to because I think there's obviously and like I, I don't know I know this is releasing after so it's okay to spoil spoil stuff but um you know just with the ending of that episode just I think such a shock and unseen and unheard of sort of in the show before that with like a younger character having a um, a death and then um also I think just uh, yeah just what you can expect from these people I mean like Reina. Blandingham and, and Brandon and and all these like Daniel these act sorry I'm saying the actors names but these new characters coming in I mean we have so many good fighters um, this season so I think it's just you can expect I, I can't wait for the fans to react to just um, the action and how good some of these people are because they're incredible so I think it's gonna be yeah it should be really fun and, and really action packed couple of episodes. Yeah, one hundred percent. And we are like almost on the verge of this next part releasing, and people people are about to witness your performance. Like it's literally releasing tomorrow. So I know it's. Um, I to tell you the truth, like just get really honest with you, it's um it's nerve wracking. It's really nerve wracking. I thought I would be, I mean, I'm so excited about it, but like, it's also it gives me a little bit of anxiety it's like oh man it's it's out there the world's gonna see it and that is it's so exciting but you're also like you know just like yeah it's I think I'm, I'm so anxious for I'm so ready for it to just be out there already but it's so exciting I think like you know as as an actor like the the best thing you can hope for and ask for is just somebody seeing what you've done and appreciating it and it affecting somebody in some way and I think knowing that this this show just has this massive fan base already and so many people even the show hasn't even come out yet i've already had a lot of people being really kind and excited so that is really meaningful i'm looking forward to you know more people just enjoying this uh these next five episodes and yeah so i just feel really lucky it's great i'm excited yeah, that was, that was literally my question, like, are you feeling nervous or excited? So it's nice to know that it's an amalgamation of both the things, and you're gonna, it's gonna be amazing. You know that deep down, you, you've done a brilliant job, and I can't wait for it to watch it so I can finally talk about it. It's very hard for me as well. Oh, that's um, awesome. That's great. But yeah, so um, for the ones, you know, who are about to watch part two, what do you personally wish people take away from your performance and the, for, for the ones who have already watched um, part two, is there anything that you can tell us about the final upcoming installment? Um, of part three, uh, I would say, so um, what I hope people would take away from my character, I hope I, hope I just fit into the, um, for the diehard fans and any of the fans, I just hope that I fit into the, the world. Uh, I, I hope I, I help move the story forward in, in a way. And I hope people enjoy, I think the Cobra Kai fans are, they're re really welcoming with, with new characters and they, they seem to be excited about new characters. So I hope I, it brings some excitement to the show and, and like ups the competition a bit for the tournament. And I just hope they, yeah, I hope they enjoy, hope they enjoy the, the characters, the Iron Dragons. Um, and you're fine. And oh, just about the next season, I would say don't expect, even though it ends on such a crazy, this, these five episodes end on such a, uh, you know, like a crazy, just that brawl and everything. It seems like it's like hard to beat that, but don't expect, you know, that to the excitement to die down. It definitely keeps alive and keeps going in, in part three and there's a lot to look forward to, so. Yeah, that was quite a very shocking and serious way they ended this show. I know. So never seen before. So I'm very excited to see how they tackle that thing. But before yeah, we yeah. wrap up our beautiful conversation, um, I have to ask you, what's next for you, Patrick, besides your sensational involvement in Cobra Kai? Is there anything else that you're currently working on that, you know, you'd like to tell us or your fans about? I have a, a uh, movie that I did this past summer, a small part in this um, coming of age, like rom-com called The Upside of Unrequited. Um, so I'm excited about that. And I also did a, a part on this uh, golf comedy on Apple TV called Rambler with um, Owen Wilson and written by... Jason Keller. So I'm, I'm really excited about those coming out. But aside from that, it's just kind of like back to 
auditioning and, and trying to, you know, get the next thing, but, uh, and, and just really enjoying this moment and trying to be as present as possible. But yeah. Yeah. And, and all the best on everything. Like, um, I'm also very excited for this part to come out and you're going to, you're going to get big roles. Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, you're so nice. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Thank, thank you. you as well. Thank you for joining me as well for this lovely interview. It was such an incredible conversation and having seen the screeners, like I mentioned, how impeccably you have performed and outshined basically everyone in the scene, like you generally stole the show. So thank oh, you so much. Oh, that's, wow, that's so sweet of you. Thank you, that's so nice of you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that.